Hey everyone, my name's Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about cinematography. Today I recreated one of my favorite scenes from the movie The Pianist. And I love this movie, I love how it's shot. It was nominated for an Academy Award for cinematography, among many other things. And this scene in particular, I really liked, and I love the lighting in it and the cinematography, and, and just the overall image is, is so beautiful to me, right? This is just my taste. And I wanted to try and recreate it the best that I could to figure out maybe how they shot it, and to try and learn something new. Look at what I did to recreate it. It's not perfect and there's plenty of things that I didn't get just right. And I only focused on the main character. In this case, I was uh, playing Adrian Brody's character. But I just want to get the feel of the image and, and really just overall vibe and to see uh, what I could do to get it as close as I could. A and here it is. So first things first, I needed to look in the frame and see what I needed to do to the image to get it where I wanted it. So what I like to do is take my camera and place it in a similar position to see what kind of images I could get. So to start off, my piano is in a really bad location if I want to replicate this scene. And the reason for that is that the piano and the subject, in this case me, should be backlit by windows. And my piano isn't facing any windows, it's actually the exact opposite side. So I needed to turn my piano around and kind of put it in the middle of the room in order to get the angles that I wanted to get, especially with things being backlit. So now that the frame compositionally looks okay to me, the next step is how am I going to light this? As you can see, the dark areas of the image are really dark and the bright areas are really bright. And I don't want this. I want things to be a little bit more muted uh, and a little bit less bright. I can't throw an ND filter on uh, because that'll crush the blacks too much. And I can't put a bunch of light in the image because the highlights are already blown. So what I did was a combination of both. And I really struggled with getting the right exposure. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I ended up getting it right first. What ended up working well for me is putting the Godox VL150 at around 20%. This got the right amount of fill, uh, but things still weren't looking quite right. Uh, things were a little too bright. So things weren't working out quite right. I started off with the light way too bright, uh, and then I gradually tried to fill it in. To me, at the beginning, it looked way too directional, which means it looked like I was lighting a scene instead of things feeling natural. So what I did to try and remedy this is just turn down uh, the lighting percentage a lot more, even though it didn't quite look right. I figured I'd get this how I wanted it, and then I'd set up my other light and try and balance the two out. So as that harsh light that was in the original film, what I decided to use was the Forza 60 with a projector lens on it to spot in the image. And what I ended up being able to do was shape the light just so it hit me the same way or a similar way to how it hit Adrian Brody. And when I looked at this, I really liked it, but uh, it was very difficult to get the right image because I wanted the, that hair light uh, and I wanted it to shine through similarly to the original scene, but I just couldn't get it to work. Um, so for me, I didn't have a bunch of time and I didn't have a bunch of light, so I settled for not having that hair light be as extreme. So once I put that light in the image, I realized that I could uh, bring everything down a bit. And how I did that was throwing an ND filter on. And once I threw an ND filter on, I really liked the exposure of the image the balance between the light that was hitting the piano from the hard light plus that fill light, to me, it balanced it out and made it feel really nice. And the final touch 
was using haze in a can. Now, so the final touch was using haze in a can. I don't have a hazer and I probably won't be buying one anytime soon because I don't use it on a regular basis. So I bought haze in a can uh, for I think it was $20 and it's lasted me a few months worth of shoots which to me makes it worth it. I don't need to go for a big hazer if I'm using it inside occasionally. Again, it's not perfect and you can't see that harsh streak of light. But for what I wanted the image to look like, this was close enough and it did the job well and I like the final result. Again, it's not perfect and I'm not the greatest at lighting in the world, but I use this as an exercise to try and get better. This should be a relatively quick video, or at least I hope it is. And I hope you learned a little something too. The, the lighting setup wasn't complicated and it took two relatively inexpensive lights. You could do this with less expensive lights, but the key thing here is that I used a spotlight. Now you can't really get this look without a spotlight. You can get close to it, and I'd love to see uh, what others can do without a spotlight. Um, but I really am happy that I have a spotlight, the Forza 60, which isn't very powerful, but with a spotlight it is, and the Godox VL150, and again at 20%, uh, it did a really great job of giving me the right amount of light. Now I tried to do things simply, tried to do things fast, and I like how it turned out. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff, uh, especially if you found value in this video. Now thank you so much for watching and keep on creating.